So this is an attempt to fix a horrible blog article I did a few years ago. I went, finally went and looked back for it. I thought it was amazing at the time. It was not. And we're going to talk a little bit about behavior-driven development and really the idea behind behavior-driven development. So we did test-driven development in software, which is actually this attempt to be able to fearlessly refactor to create a set of tests that make it where from a technical platform point of view, we know what the expected behavior is. And if we make changes, we know if we broke it and that lets us upgrade and do other things. <clears throat> and then we did acceptance test driven development. That's really using acceptance criteria as the primary test criteria at one level up from test driven. And the downside of uh, acceptance test driven development is great. We do acceptance criteria, we build tests around it, uh, very detail oriented. Um, the downside of that a little bit is it can be pretty technical and detail oriented. And so sometimes we lose the business value. Did we actually deliver the business value? We get very detailed. And when you're that detailed, sometimes you just don't know whether you, you know, you delivered the detailed thing, but you don't know if you delivered what the business and the customers or whoever citizens actually need. And so the, the latest, and this has been out for a decade longer, probably behavior driven behavior, yeah, driven development. Um, and it's basically taking the business view of this, the business outcome. We build software for some business outcome, whether it's commercial, nonprofit, government, right? We want some business value. And so if we write our acceptance criteria, if we write the definitions of what we need um, using business value, uh, and it sounds really easy, but a lot of times you just write like customers, we'd like best or better customer interaction. That's not actually a testable thing. And so what we end up needing to do is what are the, what do we mean by customer interaction? What, what does the business want that interaction to look like? And again, a lot of times when we write acceptance criteria and tests, we tend to take an inside out view. We know how things are implemented and we get really hung up on making sure we get all the tests right. But what we don't do is make sure we delivered what was asked for. And so BDD really attempts to take a business approach to that and make them the primary stakeholder for giving the acceptance criteria that we actually use. And a lot of times they'll, people will talk about it and people will just check box it so they can get through the process. And really the idea with this BDD thing is everybody should be able to understand the way the requirements were written, the business, testers, management, SMEs, engineering, right? And if we can do that, um, then we're all on the same page with what we think that means. Uh, sometimes what we do in BDD to, you know, business users tend to think in examples. Right? When this happens, I want this to happen. When this happens, I want that to happen. And they describe the business value in that, but not at the detail level, right? Like I want people to search the internet and find their names. That's different than I need people to type their name, go to a search engine, type their name in a text field, blah, 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 scroll down the page, see if they can get the results, right? Did it return? All those kinds of things. So let's take the business outcome desire of that and always ask the question in anything, any requirements document or any work item, any epic, any feature, any user story, do we know what the business outcome for this? And is it expressed in a way that we can test? And the other, you know, to make that work, again, we need some language that all the parties understand. So. Um, if you think about the backlog refinement process, right? The way this works is we convert backlogs. We create work items. We create business functionality that we ask for. Let's pretend those are features. They're about program increment and size. That's about three months typically this days. Someday this will be really dated. Um, and what we do is we describe that feature and then we set a kind of a high level version of what the acceptance criteria is. So if I were to look at this business outcome I want and I've got three months to build it, then what are all the things the business wants out of that that are testable, right? And that behavior that's specified at the feature level will end up being too coarse grained to test with at a detail level. And so what we do is we take that three month feature, we break it down into a set of user stories or a set of work items that, in, that are going to deliver the individual bits of that functionality. And in theory, we can deliver into production some pieces of that feature um, some incremental business value before the entire business value of the feature. And that business value of the feature is also some incremental value on some epic. So if we look at the feature and we have acceptance criteria and those acceptance criteria 
are defined in a BDD way. They're defined from the business outcome point of view, and there'll be NFRs and other acceptance criteria. Then what we should be able to do when we break down a feature, we should be able to grab those acceptance criteria and go, this user story exists to be able to implement this acceptance criteria. Right. And so all the acceptance criteria are end up being, and parts of those end up being implemented in one or more user stories. And the sum of the user stories should be all the detail acceptance criteria that make up all the acceptance criteria in the feature. So the success of this entire process really hinges on getting the acceptance criteria right. And this is really hard work. Everybody hates it. And you end up with a bunch of meetings that seem pointless, but when you don't do this, or they seem to drag, but when you don't do this, you end up in the middle of a work stream and you have no idea what you were supposed to deliver. And sometimes you even forget what you were supposed to deliver because what happens is the user stories keep getting cut down and the feature gets cut down to make the deliverable. And because you didn't modify the acceptance criteria or you, you modify technical acceptance criteria, you don't know whether the business functionality is actually going to be delivered. So again, if we start with the business view of this, we'll know when we make changes, whether we impacted the business view of that, right? So MVP is still good, but what was the business outcome we wanted from the MVP? So if you take a user story um, and you have its acceptance criteria, you've gone into some uh, iteration and you've created a user story, a set of user stories out of a feature, out of a program increment, those acceptance criteria actually become test cases. Every acceptance criteria in the user story becomes a test case and we would like to automate those use cases. So today we write acceptance criteria with words, we convert those to TDD or ATDD, ATDD, and what we want, what's great, is if we can get a business outcome version of that, then we could write a test that describe, that tests the business outcome. Not, did I protect PII? Not, did I click on this button? If I click this button, I expect to get a 200 back. You know what? What the business wants is the user typed something in and searched, and then they got an answer back that was what they expected. So we take these user stories, we convert those, we convert the acceptance criteria into test cases because the tests don't care how it was implemented. All they care about is that this user story met all of the business objectives that were in it, right? So if we look at the testing patterns for this, um, I'm gonna do this, oh, yeah. So in testing theory, or when you people talk about testing that are kind of into that, right? You have preconditions, action, and postconditions. Something, I have data in the data, the user has a bank account, right? and they make a withdrawal, that's their action, and their balance goes down, right? That's like a precondition, an action, a postcondition. So every test that you have has a precondition, an action, and a postcondition. And some of those might be degenerate, especially the precondition. You might, you might have a totally greenfield kind of test, right? And you'll sometimes hear this as a range, act, assert. That is the AAA pattern, right? AAA pattern. The preconditions are the arrangement, Ah, uh, that person to do this test already has account with a hundred dollar balance. And the action is they did a withdrawal of a hundred dollars, right? That's their action. And then we're going to assert that they actually were able to withdraw that money without an error because they had that balance in it. Right. And so that is the way we think about it when we write uh, test driven development or we do acceptance test driven development. We do a lot of a range act assert. Gerk, um, Gherkin syntax, which is really a BDD framework uses a similar three-step pattern, but they mandate what those things are called and they make the tests be defined within those three parts, right? When we write TDD or ATDD, ATDD, we, it's sort of free form. Hey, you got to do a range act assert. Thank you very much. When you do something in Gherkin, you're very explicit about what the precondition is, the action, and what the post condition is. And so if we can get business users to describe what they want in that syntax, then we can take given I have a bank account when I'm with $200 in it, when I make a $100 withdrawal, then I get my money with no uh, overdraw, right? And so if we can get business to describe their business process like that, that smells a lot like the test that we build, we should be able to build a test that works around that. And basically what happens is in, in uh, SpecFlow and in Cucumber, they hardwire this given when then, the arrange act assert, and whenever you define a test in those terms, they create little step functions that are stubs and you go and implement those step functions. And so you don't write a whole list, a giant long test. You basically define the example given when then, 
And then the test itself is a bunch of little pieces that get bolted together to make that happen. So um, I'm going to give you some examples of this, right? So at a feature level, uh, what we need is something that sort of represents the entire program at high level. So my scenario here is trademark owner sites should have priority with internet searches, right? And really the business outcome here is we want, we're a search engine and when trademark uh, terms are entered, we want the trademark owners to be honored, right? And the search results and not go somewhere else and not have people steal like traffic, unless it's an ad and we get paid for it. So given I search the internet and I use a term, then the results should include the trademark holder site. Okay, I, so given I search the internet, when I use a term, I should have phrased that better when I search for that term. Anyway, the results should include a trademark. So that's a feature. Now the user stories for that, there could be a whole bunch of those, how that's gonna work, right? And, um, and we may decide, uh, you know, how do we know it's a trademark? Um, what's a trademark holder site? Does it have to be their home site? All those kinds of things. So if I were to take this feature, trademark owner sites should have priority over internet searches, and I break that down into a story. I'm actually gonna do one user story that talks about how this search would work. Search engine results should include a link to the domain uh, with that name if it exists. So this is sort of an MVP. I didn't really look up trademarks or anything. I assume if you put a search term in and there's a domain with that word, then that might be tied to the trademark uh, vendor. And they almost always are. They almost always have something. It may not be their primary. And so we're gonna assume uh, this, this user story says, given I searched the internet with a search engine, when I search with a term, there should be well, at least one link with the search term in the domain, right? So before I said, we're going to honor trademarks, now I'm looking at a use case, an example that we're going to build and we're going to test to make sure this user story, this acceptance criteria is met as one of the early ways we could implement that feature and meet the business requirement. You can do other ones here. So in, in that one I said before, like, let's look at other users. So now I, I had that one, right? If I were to take this, I wanted, and now I'm like, well, you know what? I'm gonna, oh, these are wrong. So the scenarios are wrong here. You can see I copied and pasted, right? So it should say, search with web crawler returns the results in a domain. When I search the internet using site web crawler, which doesn't exist anymore, and I use the term Microsoft, there should be like with one link with the Microsoft.com in them. And then I said the same thing for Alta Vista. I search the internet using Alta Vista. When I search for the term Apple, there should be at least one link with the term apple.com in it. So I will fix this text on the blog and point it out anyway. But that's the idea, right? So we went from sort of this user story acceptance criteria. When we actually got down to writing um, tests for this, we expanded the examples and created two examples around that. And we're actually going to make sure that this works on multiple uh, search engines, right? Now, if I was a search engine company, I only care about mine, or I care about how other people are doing compared to me. So this is an example where we did two examples for acceptance criteria that will be converted into tests. These are Gherkin syntax here, and um, we're going to have these two test cases. Now, this is at a business level, right? I just, I kind of took the the desired outcome view. And I will tell you what I don't like, and I've seen this before. If engineers are the ones making behavior-driven tests, they write engineering tests, right? If technical analysts write it, really you need product-oriented people to look at business outcomes. So this is what I've seen people write a lot of times. Given I wanna search for something on the internet, I open Chrome, I type in bing.com, I, I click on the search box, I enter Facebook in the search field, I click on the search button, I get a 200 back, and at least one href. In the previous ones, all of those steps actually occur, but I didn't specify them because the reality from a business point of view, they don't care for that, right? What they want is the behavior that delivers business value is, we go back up, we look at it, this one here, right? This is the at the user story level, but we could come up here to the feature level. At the user story level, right? All of that detail that was in that technical one is buried underneath. And the other one's hard for people to read, and it's not readable by management, it's not readable by some SMEs. This one is, it's the technical team's job to figure out what it means under the hood. So that's it, I think. I don't have anything else. Yep, that was it, no videos here. What we're trying to do is behavior, business value-driven development and testing and definitions, and then we drive those into test cases 
uh, that we use to verify over the long haul, independent of implementation, that we met the business needs. Have a great day.